welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a video that I am actually, it's one of my favorite videos to do every single year. I'm so excited to film this. I love making big TBRs that are kind of like a challenge to me that then we go back when the kind of time is up and like react to it and watch it <laughs> and see whether I actually achieve what I want to achieve. And I never do. I never do, but I really enjoy doing it. So today we're going to be doing the 23 books I need to read before I turn 23. So my birthday is on January 28th. I actually, 23? That means you're old. <laughs> I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. I think I said this when I turned 22. Like, I kind of just feel like 17 still. I don't feel like I've really aged since then. The idea of turning 23, my mum had me when she was 24. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> and I remember last time I did this, I did the video in like August or September. And that's a lot to ask of me, like <laughs> to read 22 books. It was that time that I don't really have concrete plans to read in only like four months. That's a lot to ask. So I'm doing it a lot earlier this year to hopefully actually give myself a better chance of being successful. That's the aim. So let's just get straight into it. These are kind of the books I'm most excited to read at the moment. They're like top of my priority list. So first on this list is a fairly new requirement to my TBR and it's one of the most beautiful books I own. It is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. I mean look at the sprayed edges. Ah! <laughs> this book makes me, it just makes me so happy to look at. It just makes me so happy to look at. The painted end pages, whoa. I mean like come on, come on, it kills me. Alexa, Tell me I'm stunning. So I'm very excited. This is from Fairy Loot, and honestly, they just kill it. They get what I want. I feel like they're special editions of books are just getting better and better and better. Like they keep pulling out the bag and I'm like, what are you putting in these to make, like, how are you doing this? <laughs> so this was actually on my most anticipated releases of the year, even before I got it from Fairy Loot. It is like a retelling of this Chinese legend of a daughter of the moon goddess. And I just know that it's basically about our main character, like rescuing her mother. Her mother is kind of exiled, I believe, and it's her trying to um, rescue her. The vibes, I feel like it's gonna be like, beautiful and romantic and soft and gorgeous and floaty. I mean, I just love it. <laughs> You know, I want to get around to reading some of the books I own that are my favourite book. Like, this is one of my favourite looking books that I own, so I really want to get around to reading it. I'm very, very excited. Then, actually, let's quickly chat about some of the books I have. You can't see it anymore because I've moved my stuff around a bit. But some of my books that are wrapped up, I do a series. I missed it last month, but don't worry, it's coming this month. My 2021 releases that I haven't read are wrapped up, and I unwrap one and I read it in a blog. And let's talk about three there because sometimes it's easy to forget about them because they're wrapped up I don't visually see them anymore because one of them is my other favorite fairy loot special edition that I own and that's Six Crimson Cranes. One of my patrons Melissa like keeps telling me I need to read this and how amazing this book is and every time I'm like okay. okay okay this was the first like book that I've got recently from fairy loot that I was like I don't know how to live like <laughs> this one I can't really remember the plot of it I'm gonna be like a hundred percent honest with you I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you I can't remember the plot of it but I've almost read it a couple times for many different videos like fate keeps pulling us apart so I'm hoping maybe in the next couple months it will come up and wrapped up then we have the man who died twice by Richard Osman this is the sequel to the Thursday murder club which was my favorite book of last year and like I need to read it <laughs> I can't believe I haven't read it yet. I read Thursday Murder Club, I think in like November. So I've had a fair amount of time to read this and it just hasn't happened. Now I own it and it's wrapped up and I need to just read it. But yeah, the Thursday Murder Club is this like murder mystery about these old group of friends at this retirement home and it's them like solving murders together. They have a murder club where they solve, try, well not solve, they try to solve cold cases together. And then um, a murder happens on their doorstep and they actually have to solve it. I like drama, drama drives me at times. And then this is the sequel, and here's the thing, usually when celebrities write books, I'm like, Mm -mm 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 -mm. But Richard Osman, it does make sense. If you know him, he's like a very intelligent person. I would like, he would be someone I would have expected to write a book. And I think now he's actually becoming an author full time. I think, well, no, I think he's keeping one of his TV shows, but I know he's stepped down from Pointless, which if you're not from the UK, doesn't make any sense. But one of his TV shows, he's, he's leaving to give more time to his writing. And yeah, I feel like he's one of the only celebrity authors, like especially the ones that try to like do it, not just one book, but like, a, a lot um who I've actually like vibed with and I feel like we can excuse him death to all of them 
<laughs> apart from Richard Osman. And then finally we have Theatre of Marvel. So this is what I'm super excited for. It's coming out in the next couple weeks, I think, months. I don't know. It's coming out sometime soon and I have an arc of it. I know it's about this girl, I think it's set in like Victorian times, who is kind of like in a circus. I think she like masquerades as like a leopard girl, something that's like her personality, but obviously she's not a leopard girl, but that's like what the circus sells her as. And I think like women start going missing or getting murdered like around her vicinity or like in women in vulnerable places that she kind of knows about and she endeavors to kind of figure it out it's like genuinely one of my perfect books i feel like historical mystery like genuinely i'm gonna eat it up oh my god jesus christ check out the bless me <laughs> So again, this is one that I'm hoping, I may like, I kind of know what it looks like. It's like a paperback. So maybe next month I may try and like, you know, sort it out. We'll see how well I do. But that is another one that's wrapped up that I want to read. Okay, back into the physical books. Next is one that I went and bought recently and it is A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle. This is pitched as like a perfect book for Agatha Christie fans. They're very Agatha Christie. November, 1924, the Endeavour set sail with 2000 passengers and a killer on board. I actually went, um, <laughs> I went and looked at this author's, he has like a public Goodreads page, and he was just reading like, loads of Agatha Christie. Sorry, I was trying to get a book out, but I can't get it out of my car to show you. Yeah, he's, he was just reading like loads of Agatha Christie nonfiction. So some of you may know I own Murder Isn't Easy, which is all about like the poisons in Agatha Christie's books. And he was like reading that and like no one's read it. And I was like, me and you, me and you, Tom, we can get along. <laughs> so obviously this just sounds right up my street. I actually really love murder mysteries on boats. I think they're a great setting because you are trapped. And I have plans to read this in the next couple months. So this will definitely well, almost definitely be getting read unless I change my plans. Tom just seems like a nice guy. I mean, like, look, he hails from Leeds, where I went to uni, now lives in Oxfordshire with his partner, a cat, and two surprisingly cunning tortoises. I mean, like, Tom, I like you. I like you. We can get along. And this is his debut, so I'm very excited to read it. Next, we have another arc that I've got. This is coming out very soon. <laughs> It may even, oh no, here we go, 3rd of May, this is coming out. This is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. So when I requested this, I just requested it because I saw about it on Twitter, but I didn't realise Kelly Barnhill was the author of, I think it's When the Girl Drank the Moon, which is like a super popular, like, middle grade fantasy kind of book. But this is like a historical retelling. I'm like into historical stuff at the moment, set in the 50s. And I think it's about like women used to be dragons and then they were like contained and it's like women becoming dragons again. I don't know, this sounds like my kind of thing like fantasy magical realism -y. like women rise up and they all become dragons and take the sky i don't know next book right next book i want you all to contain yourselves like i want you to try not to scream i want you to try not to scream at this book that has found itself into my path today it arrived this morning and i was like it needs to go on the list I'm the girl by Courtney Summers. Stop. Oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. Well, this is Courtney Summers' new release. This comes out, I think, in September. Yeah, it does. September. And I'm so excited. A lot of you know Courtney Summers is one of my favorite authors. I just like, she gets what I want. She just gets it. Like, the darkness, the themes that she writes about, just everything is absolutely perfect. This, I just know, is very based on, like, the Harvey Weinstein case and kind of, like, abuse of power. I've read a lot, actually, about what Courtney Summers has said about this book, and I know I read a quote recently where she spoke about how a lot of her books are kind of, like, protagonists who believe the, already believe the world is shit basically who already already believe that the world has no hope but i think our protagonist in this kind of <laughs> realizes that as the book goes on i cannot say enough of a big thank you to wednesday books for sending this to me because they have to send it like from america to me and that is just so incredible i'm so thankful i think that's the first time like a publisher has ever done that for me so i'm just so thankful and this is probably one of my most anticipated releases of the year probably this the Paris apartment which I've read. I can't think of what other ones would be up there but like this is so up there. I, I am gonna read it. I'm gonna read it before it comes out. I'll probably read it in the next couple months at some point um, because I keep looking at it and I'd, I mean I have no video plans for this <laughs> but I'm gonna like just have to figure it out somehow and read it somehow because I am just so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Next we have a book that's part of a series that I absolutely love and it is A Picture of Murder which is the fourth Lady Hardcastle mystery. It's the next one I need to read. I have 
haven't read one of these in a while. I'm like getting the itch. When was the last one I read? I think sometime in the autumn winter of last year I read the last one. So it's been a while. This is Lady Hardcastle. I've sold this so many times. And her maid Flo, who are besties, are besties. They solve mysteries together in this quaint English town that they moved to. It's generally my favourite thing ever. Like this series, it's the perfect palette cleanser to me. I feel like so attached to it. I just love the vibes, the atmosphere. It's just like the perfect like refresh for me as a book, which I feel like I need right now. Listen, the vlog, <sighs> I'm doing a vlog at the moment that was supposed to go up on Sunday, then was supposed to go up today. We're hoping now it's gonna go up on Thursday, but like how well that's gonna go, I don't know. So I do feel like I need a refresh. I agree, I've had it. And I'm so, you know what I've had? It, it. This one is something to do with, they go to a moving picture that's being shown in the village on Halloween, but it goes, oh yeah, it, take, it takes a macabre turn when the first night screening ends with a mysterious murder and the second night with another. One by one, the actors turn up dead in ways that eerily echo their film. I mean, come on. It's giving me the drama. I'm so excited to read this. Next, we have two graphic novels. I've spoken recently, when did I speak about this? No, you know what? I spoke about it in a Patreon personalized video I made, not on here. But I spoke in that video about how I'm wanting to read more graphic novels because I just don't pick them up enough, but I love them. And so the two that I absolutely want to make sure I read are the two that I have left in the Tea Dragon Society, the Tea Dragon Festival, and the Tea Dragon Tapestry. I read the first one and it was like one of the most perfect graphic novels I've ever read up there with Heartstopper. I just need to read these now. I'm going to try and like pace them out. I don't want to read them both at the same time, but genuinely. I just want you to know some of the most gorgeous art you will have ever seen in your life. Some of the most gorgeous art you've ever seen in your life. I just feel so lucky to own these. I think I'm going to cherish them for my whole life. I think the stories in it are amazing. I can't wait to like read them with my kids one day. Like I just think they're amazing and I love them and I need to read them. And I think they're the most perfect graphic novels. Ever, so I want to read them both. Next one that I had to put on this list was Finley Donovan is Killing It by Elle Cosimano. Now, this is like booktube's obsession at the moment. The girlies are eating it up. And like, as I feel like a resident mystery, cozy mystery person on booktube, I need to read it. Like, I feel like I'm letting everyone down by not having read this yet. I'm not holding it up. Like, I'm not holding up my standards. This is personal. I know this about an author, Finley Donovan, who is a struggling writer, and when she's like pitching her next book to her editor or agent, um, a woman <laughs> overhears her and thinks she's like a hit woman and gives her money to kill her husband. And it's her like kind of like struggling through this and like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? Everyone loves it. And I haven't read it yet, which is shameful. It's a start of another series though, but like who cares at this point. Next we have Over the Woodward Wall by A. Debra Baker, another start of a series, but I feel like this has been on my TBR for so long. Shauna Maguire is one of my favorite authors ever. Yeah, we're following two kids as they explore this magical world kind of thing. This is a book from Middle Game that is written about in middle game that Sean McGuire has then gone on to write. So very, very excited to read this. I've spoken about it a lot lately though, so I don't feel like we need to get into it. Next, let's actually talk about these just together briefly. These are two like ends of duologies that I feel like I definitely need to finish these two duologies this year. I always say this year because my birthday's so near to the start of the next year, like only a couple, well, a couple weeks into the new year that it always feels like I have this year and then, you know, a couple weeks bonus at the start of next year. But we have Muse of Nightmares by Lenny Taylor and The Monarchs by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. I really love both of the start of these duologies. This one is like very hard to describe, but it's this magical, fantastical world. We have Laszlo Strange, who's obsessed with the mythical lost city of Weep, and then he finds out he can go there and it's crazy. This one is a sorority book where we're following these witchy, sisters in the sorority um, and them like bonding and like crazy stuff happening and I really really like the first one I didn't think I would like it as much as I did so these are two duologies that are definitely like top of my list to finish. Next we have one I haven't spoken about in a long time so I don't know if people will be expecting to see this but it is The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. So I love Nevo. I love The Singing Hill Cycle which is like her novella um, short story collection but I put a tweet out recently about how I really want books <laughs> that give that old Hollywood vibe that Evelyn Hugo has. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. It's something I, I feel like there's not enough of. I can't believe there's not more books set in that kind of golden age of Hollywood actors. I love like the behind the scenes of studios in Hollywood. I love that kind of thing. And there's just like not enough books about that. And a lot of people mentioned Siren Queen, which is Nevo's release this year, which I'm so excited for. But I feel like I should read this before I buy 
like another book. Like I just feel like morally that is the correct thing to do. And this is, I heard funny things about this, but I think I am gonna love it. This is a great Gatsby retelling, but it's like fantastical. And it's focusing on Jordan Baker. And it's like a retelling, it's magical. Jordan Baker is queer and Asian in this. And I just love Nebo's writing. It's pretty short, I think it's only just over 200 pages, about 250 pages. So hopefully it won't take too long to read. Then we have one of the books I have wanted to read for the longest time. And I, I just have never fit it into a vlog. I think at some point I am gonna have to do reading the books I couldn't fit into vlogs video because it's like gone on too long. But it is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Michelle McNamara is kind of trying to figure out who the Golden State Killer is. I believe he has now been caught. Michelle McNamara has passed away, but this is like her basically trying to figure out who it is. And I think actually some of her research led to the, the actual killer being caught. And I love true crime. Me and Tom watch a lot of true crime stuff together. Not so much lately. We haven't been watching a lot of like Netflix true crime stuff because it is very heavy. So I prefer to watch like, I do love Shane and Ryan from X used to be BuzzFeed Unsolved, now on The Watcher. I love their true crime stuff because it does have a bit of, not lightness to it, but like it doesn't crush your soul quite as much. <laughs> the genre is interesting, but you've got to be careful how you consume it. But anyway, I really, really want to read this. I've wanted to read it. It's, I've probably owned it for like two years at this point, And it's one of the books still, if you ask me like, what would you like to read most? It would be up there, but for some reason I never get around to it. Oh, then we have one that a lot of you have been telling me to read. It is The Marlowe Murder Club. This, I believe, is very similar to The Thursday Murder Club. I think we have, yeah, we have another, like, old protagonist who then has to figure shit out, figure a murder out, essentially. So I decided to go and investigate it. But yeah, a lot of you have been telling me that I'm really gonna love it. Again, very Agatha Christie, event, again, very murder mystery and my kind of jam. I feel like I'm actually worried about my shelves because I feel like I'm actually running out of a lot of space on my murder mystery thriller shelves and I have like got loads of space in my fantasy. I'm like, should I switch them over? But I don't really want to do it. I don't know. I don't know. It's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> Oh, then we have an author that I absolutely cannot wait to start. This is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I can't wait to read this. I've always wanted to read Simone St. James. I think a lot of you have told me I'm gonna like her stuff. We have this murder that happened in the town many, many years ago in the 70s. And the suspect was seen fleeing from the crime, but she was acquitted. And then in the present day, we've got like a true crime blogger who interviews her and um, weird shit starts occurring. Like, it's like, is it haunted? Is there a little bit of haunted? wantedness to it like items move when she's not looking and she could swear she's seen a girl outside the window so I'm very very excited I've always wanted to read Simone St. James and I think I might read like more than one Simone St. James this year which is very exciting I'm hoping to get around to a lot of her books oh we've mentioned Agatha Christie a little bit <laughs> so the next book that's on my list is Lord Edgware Dies by Agatha Christie so Peril at End House is on my 2022 TBR and then this is the next one in the Erky Poirot series so that's why it's on here a lot of you have told me I am going to enjoy this one as well. This is literally just on here because I would like to get up to this point at least this year with Agatha Christie, Parallel End House and this one and then probably my reread of Murder on the Orient Express because that's the next one in the series. Um, so yeah I would like to read those three at least this year and they're not very long. They're only like 250 pages so I'm very excited. I haven't read a novel of Poirot since last summer. So it's been a while, it's time to get back into it. Then we have one of the top books I wanna read, which is A Spindle Splendid by Alex E. Harrow. I've spoken about this quite a bit lately as well, I think. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, it's a novella. Listen, there's illustrations throughout it. Um, many of you know Alex E. Harrow wrote my second favorite book of last year, which was The Once and Future Witches. I mean, this book just looks so cool. And so I want to read all of her other stuff. I do own $10,000 January. I don't know when I'm gonna get around to do that though, but this I can definitely get around to. Next we have Until the Last of Me by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is the next in, oh my God, what has happened to my page here? This is a very strange fiction series. It's very strange. Uh <laughs> Where there's these women who tried to influence historical events. The first book was kind of World War II into the space race. I'm not sure when this one is set, but yeah, it's like an alternate history. It's very hard to speak about, but Sylvain Nouvelle just kind of gets, I feel like him and Andy Weir are my two top, 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 top sci-fi writers. They just kind of get what I want. They get like the weird, well, this is weirdness. Andy Weir gets like the 
the factualness of what I want, but this gets the weirdness that I want. I feel like the, the thrilleriness of this is like almost apocalyptic, it's sci-fi. Oh, it's so good. And I'm very intrigued to see where this, this series is gonna go. Okay, we have two more. Two more, I feel like we've gotten through that quite fast. Next we have Only a Monster. Now this one, when it arrived in Fairy Loot, it's another Fairy Loot edition, I like, <laughs> I was, I didn't, I'd never heard of it before. And I was like, am I gonna wanna read this? But then loads of you were telling me how it's perfect. How again, it has that kind of like fantasy historical mystery combination that I love, that it's like my favorite combination. I get the sense that it's kind of like dark academia-y. I've seen a lot of fan art for it and like the vibes are immaculate, but I, I don't know anything about the plot. Like I generally don't know anything about the plot. Sorry, sorry, it's one of those. I don't know anything about the plot, but so many of you have told me that it's like gonna be my new favorite book, then I'm like, okay, well, I have to read it before I turn 23. And then finally, it's another book of the month book that I have, and that is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This is another, another like murder mystery. Again, it's like six friends, isolated <laughs> on this island and I think they start dying essentially one person goes missing and another turns up dead from Rachel Hawkins what I expect is like just a fun mystery that's like high stakes it's fairly short so I feel like it's gonna have a very fast fast pace okay so there we have it friends that is my 23 books I have to read before I turn 23 on January 28th next yeah. Let me know if you've read any of these, what ones you think I should get to first. I feel like, I genuinely believe I'm gonna read all of these. I think I'm doing very well with making these TBRs now. I feel like I've got a sense of what I end up reading. Yeah, let me know which of these you've read or which of them you're most excited for me to read. If you got to the end of the video, comment the butterfly emoji for the monarchs. Comment that down below if you got to the end. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!